Hi. <laughs> so, because I missed the magic button. Uh, so we're looking at new adventures in SEO. And my name is Dane Nukenna. I'm a community lead at MediaCurrent. Been involved in web development since 2000. Drupal community since 2008. I'm currently uh, involved in uh, architecting and developing sites at MediaCurrent along with uh, coordinating some of our internal efforts. Uh, co-maintainer of MetaTag module, some others. Um, I'm also involved in the security team and I run a meeting every Thursday at one o'clock called the Contrib Half Hour where we talk about different Contrib topics, uh, do demos, do Q&A. Uh, we'll be expanding it a bit more next month. Um, there's a blog post on our site if you want to look into details. But I'm also that guy with bunny ears. Um, that you'll see <coughs> hopping around the issue queues. Um, uh, I work with MediaCurrent, like I said. We're a full service digital agency out of Atlanta. We work with open source tools, focus on Drupal, but because of the way the web works, it's expanding beyond Drupal. Uh, so today's agenda, we're going to look at the past, the present, and the future of SEO. So let's take a look at the past of SEO. Back when the web was new, 1997 edition. So, there was an SEO in 1997. <laughs> you basically built something, it was the heady days of websites. You built something, it didn't matter what it was. New York Times, that's an image map. Um, and they, you had to hover over the static image to click to the different sections to get to that page. Um, and somebody wrote a bot for uh, um, that posts a screenshot to Twitter of a website from the 90s to show you what it was like. So that's NBC. Um, missing some images, but you can tell it, it's pretty ugly pretty bad. Um, basically, if you built it, you would maybe get visitors because nobody knew too much what the internet was. Um, once some competitions started showing up, there were things called meta tags invented, uh, big one being the keywords, and people would, it, it was kind of the, the Shinola to make your site better than the competition. And meta tags are things like the, the title tag kind of counts. Um, so that's what shows up on your browser. And when you do a search, uh, this was a blog post I wrote about my, do I have a picture? I don't have a picture of it, but my terrible bowling skills. Um, and wrote a blog post, Google indexed it, the title shows up as the title bar there, the description, kind of a summary shows up in the summary, it was able to pull out publication date and copyright, and that's where it shows up. Um, but people started thinking, well, we can take advantage of this. And there's a phrase called bad actors. Uh, it, it's somebody who's troublemaking, who's you bending the rules for uh, somewhat illegitimate or contentious purposes. And no, I did a search just to try and get some, you know, example images to throw in here. And the first one was our dear friend, Mr. Nicholas Cage. But we're not talking about Nicholas Cage today. And we're talking about cheating at SEO. And a big one early on was keyword stuffing. Google has a page where they give you some uh, things to watch out for when you're doing it yourself. And don't do this. So their example of keyword stuffing has... Um, it's uh, the idea is it's for a site that has cigar humidor. So the keywords have just it's a running paragraph that keeps mentioning the same phrase over and over again. Um, and the description tag was used, and people would do things like they would put paragraphs of just random words on the page and use CSS or font tags or whatever to hide the text. So a person viewing the page wouldn't see this text, but a um, very rudimentary at the time, 
search engine scraper tool would pick up all these words and go, hey, this site has lots of info about cigar or humidors. But, um, so, I, at the time, uh, just after finishing uh, some college, my first job out of there was with a site that did hotel promotion. And if you've seen hotels.com, they wanted to be hotels.com. And they built these uh, static sites that the URL would have all these keywords like cheap hotels Orlando so when you did a search for cheap hotels in Orlando the idea was they would try and rank high but there was no content on the site um, and they would aim at specific markets and then have different variations so they would have cheap hotels Orlando then it would have Orlando cheap hotels .com. and CheapOrlandoHotels.com. <laughs> you, you see where this is going. Um, and there was a page rank algorithm change in the fall of 2002, and they overnight went from like top three results to the second page, if not worse, for almost all of their pages, all of their sites. And it um, was a contributing factor to tanking the business because they every time there's an algorithm change. They had to redo everything because they were building all of these spam tutorial sites as static HTML. Um, so out of that came the realization that content was king. You can try and rig things, but ultimately you need to have good content. Um, so that takes us to the present. Um, the kind of the purpose of SEO as a, a general thing is to improve your search engine ranking. So when somebody searches for something, your content will show up better. And then to direct more traffic to your site. Um, and to make your good content easier to find. But at this point, the algorithms are pretty darn good. There's not a lot that the with standard modern web development practices, there isn't a lot that a lot of help that Google needs to find your content. Um, it's able to scrape the page, run JavaScript to um, uh, make sure that you know, if you've got JavaScript that runs out on the page load, like with uh, detached uh, websites. So, um, it's able to handle all of that and get a really, really good understanding of what your site and your page's content is. Um, so you come to the realization that yes, content is king, but original, high quality, legitimate content with good structure is even better. Um, so the good structure is things on the page itself, having a good page title, having different levels of heading tags within your page, not just having paragraphs and then using CSS to make, well, this paragraph we're going to say is a heading, so we add CSS to it, of actually using the, he the header tags properly. Having a logical flow, so you have one H1 at the top of the page, then the next <coughs> tag hierarchically would be H2. If you need to do subtopics off that, it's H3, and so on. And then you've got things like alt tags on your images and you're cross-linking between different pages. Uh, this is pretty easy to do uh, with Drupal because um, when you're like tagging your content with categories, it creates text on return pages automatically for all of the tags. And so this, the, uh, bot, the search bots will follow from your article, see you've got these tags on the page, and then follow the tags and find all this other content and see it's all cross-linked. And coincidentally, having good alt tags and title tags and heading tags, all these things, that's accessibility 101. And for more details on that, please join our lovely, our wonderful Carrie Fisher and Helena McCabe, who's somewhere else today, at 3.15 for uh, an excellent talk on accessibility. Um, so then you start looking at, well, the site traffic. How are people finding the site? And I took these stats last night um, of a small site that I, I help run. And uh, something that kind of stands out is that the first, the, the source of, the first 
source of traffic to the site is people manually typing in the uh, the website URL. In this case, it's a new site, so people come to the site because they know about it, they like coming to the site. The second one is people searching for something on Google and uh, then being seeing the page and it comes up and they go to the site. The third is Facebook. And actually, the fourth is Facebook. And the eighth is Facebook. And the ninth and the tenth are all Facebook. So combined together, all of the visitors from Facebook probably equal all of the visitors from Google, from people searching for stuff. So what we found is that content is shared an awful lot on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever, and an awful lot of traffic to sites has been driven by that. So to help with that, they have, uh, when you go to share a, a page uh, on your site on Facebook, there are standards for like, grabbing the page title, description, site name, so when you put in a URL to share it, it automatically, automatically grabs uh, some of the things off the page and shows it. And there are standards for these new meta tags. Facebook have their open graph tags. Twitter have their Twitter cards. Pinterest has their Pinterest tags. LinkedIn thankfully uses open graph. But Google Plus has even more. Slack uses an open graph, but just more and more social networks have their own tags. Um, so you end up having a lot of bits to deal with. But you might have seen this before. It it's at times really feels like um, you have all these different organizations think, well, there's an existing standard, but it maybe it it's not quite good enough, or we'll combine efforts and we'll build a new one. And then you end up with even more standards. So it, there's a bit of juggling, there's a lot to keep up with. Um, and back to those bad actors. No, not Nicolas Cage. Uh, they started to get a bit more professional. They're not just after um, hotel sales, hotel room sales. And no, we're not talking about World Weekly News um, of bad children. It's more things like uh, people posting stories of hotel or restaurants sharing or, um, restaurants uh, selling human meat and that content gets shared left, right and center. Um, people freaking out about uh, pods uh, candy thinking it has a relation to the Tide pods that everybody has two of in the morning to get them going in the day. <laughs> but, um, turns out the pods snake the pods thing was a packaged product going back almost a decade. So you discover that Facebook and Twitter and others have their algorithms have been abused by people to push um, uh, even more fake content. And the granddaddy of them all was the report this week of it being used to influ uh, influence elections uh, using um, false and incorrect information uh, being shared on social networks. So what does this mean? How do you deal with this? It goes back to focusing on your site on original legitimate content that all of these search engines are realizing we need to come up with better solutions for not ranking um, uh, content about um, uh, pod candy and uh, human meat in restaurants at the same level as legitimate content. Uh, so also be careful then with your sources when you're posting things and cross-linking to things. And remember that content ultimately will still win out. Good content will still win out once they get over some of their algorithm changes. And check Snopes. So looking to the future then, again, original, high-quality, legitimate content with good structure will ultimately serve you the, the best needs in the end. Um, 
So with that in mind, I've got some recommendations. So the first one is focus on making sure that all of your content is mobile accessible. Uh, some sort of a responsive layout or design on your site. And to not have a separate website for mobile visitors, have it as part of your main website itself. The second one is to focus on page speed, not strictly how long your page takes to uh, to build a page, but one for anonymous traffic, how long does the page take to display? Um, use things like the Google Page Speed Test, and for Drupal 7 and 8, there's a, the advanced CSS JavaScript aggregator module, ADVAG. Um, can be really excellent. It takes a bit of fine tuning to get it to where you need it to, but it's um, really excellent at helping with that. You can get page, the page speed tool has um, a percentage ranking or score for your page, and with the advanced aggregator module, you can get 100% scores. Uh, otherwise, doing it by hand, it can be a bit of effort. Then look at rich data. There's a, thankfully, going back to the, the old uh, XKCD thing of there being one more standard, but thankfully there's a joint standard for um, metadata definitions for how you describe things. Like if you've got a product on your site that you're selling, there's standard definitions for how you describe that product and even for different types of products. Like a book, you'll want to display that and mark it up differently than a, say, a movie or a hammer or whatever. And because it's a, an open standard and the, there's kind of an open community around it, it solves the problem of having competing standards because all these people have combined and uh, collaborated together. And thankfully there's a, a new module for Drupal 7 and 8 called the schema.org meta tag module that can really help um, to do that. It's starting off small, so it doesn't support all of the, the definitions, but um, it's building towards it. And then an interesting one is to make sure your site is secure, to have it available as a HTTPS, not just HTTP. Uh, with, uh, there are, you can you know, buy your own certificate, there's a service called letsencrypt.org, um, that has come up with a way of making SSL certificates available for everybody for free. You have to renew it every six months, but then there are commands and tools to automate that process once you do the initial setup. And some hosting providers are taking even that step out of it and do it automatically once you sign up for an account, like uh, Pantheon. I think there are some others as well. Um, uh, another one then is accessibility. There's a, like I suggested earlier, there's a huge overlap between accessibility, making your site accessible to people who use, say, screen readers, or have to blow up the fonts to like 20 point instead of your standard 10 or whatever. Um, and there's a huge overlap between the needs for making your site accessible and the needs for making your site SEO useful. And again, Carrie Fisher and Helena McCabe have a presentation at 3.15 with lots more detail on that. And let me give you a little secret. You really need to work on these now because all of these are in place now. Um, mobile traffic now worldwide represents 56% of all traffic as of January. Page speed, Google is already considering the page speed in the ranking when you uh, search with a mobile device. And they had uh, what they are jokingly called interstitial Geddon a year ago, where a lot of sites started putting this big pop-up saying, join our newsletter, fill in your email address here, and would kind of subtly hide the close button. Um, so you go to a new site and you get this huge pop-up and you, uh, a lot of people would just fill in their email address because they didn't know you can actually close that pop-up. But it, it was one more thing to just slow down your, the visitor's chance of getting to the content. And then the rich data stuff, schema.org 
actually started as an organization in 2011. They published the first standards in 2012, and to be honest, the Drupal community is getting a, has been a little late in the game on supporting this, which is surprising given that Drupal's core bread and butter is structured data. But thankfully, we're getting caught up, and we'll uh, get we'll get there. And then it's a secure site thing. Chrome 62, which came out I think last October, started giving warnings if you're on a page and you fill in, if you're on a HTTP page and you fill in a form and hit submit, it gives you a warning already that you're on an insecure page. Do you really want to submit this data? And that's going to start turning people off, uh, filling in forms, uh, signing up for things on your site. And also by the end of last year, there's, I forget which site I got this that from, um, but 75% of the top 100 results for this large category of uh, data, of search data, 75% of it was already secure. So other, so competition is already pushing towards having all of the content available through SSL, so you need to too. And lastly, accessibility. The interstitial get in, um, that was a major problem for people using mobility devices because very often those pop ups weren't built in an accessible way. So to get to the page content, you had to get past this pop up, and very often they blocked all. Uh, keyboard access to things behind and it really caused problems for people with uh, accessibility needs and Google and others are pushing even more uh, on that in the future so need to get busy uh, some uh, further reading on these topics there's a really good SEO book by Ben Finkley um, he did a Drupal 6 book that was excellent he skipped Drupal 7 and he came back with a new one for Drupal 8 that is really, really good. It goes into more of not just the tools, but also the processes, how to improve your ranking, how to monitor how people are searching for your content. And um, I'd, I'd really love to see a second edition that includes schema.org, made a tag if you happen to be listening to the recording, Ben. <laughs> um, but then, uh, beyond that, there's a really excellent site called moz.com that monitors, they write tons of articles all about search engine optimization. Um, they keep track of all of the algorithm changes that happen on Google and all the other search engines. And it, it's really well worth diving into. And then I found this one article that was really good about uh, changes forthcoming for Google's algorithms for this coming year. We've already documented some of them and like I mentioned um, things about the page speed, the accessibility, uh, those kinds of topics are mentioned in there. So um, with that, thank you very much and thank you to Nicholas Cage uh, for the assistance. Any questions? Okay. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>